Good night, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to IN, a series of online conversations between practitioners in the art world and New Local Space, which is a nonprofit visual arts organization and micro gallery in Kingston, Jamaica. My name is Deborah Anzinger, and tonight I'll be talking with three of the organizers of Caribbean Linked Holly Bino, Anna Lee Davis, and Elvis Lopez, as, wo as well as one of the artists participating, Sofia Maldonado. Caribbean Linked is a residency program and exhibition presented by Atelier 89 Foundation and the Mondrian Foundation in Aruba in collaboration with ARC Magazine and the Fresh Milk Art Platform. It is taking place from August 25th through September 6th and it is in Orangestad, Aruba. And the invited artists this year include Omar Kouas, sorry if I'm brutalizing anybody's names, um, Veronica Dorset. Mark King, Shirley Rufin, Sofia Maldonado, Diraj Rams, Ram Samoedi, Rodel Warner, who is also an NLS artist, Robin De Vogel, Kevin Schwitt, and Jermil German. Tonight they'll be telling us what the format of Caribbean Link is, how it came to be, and what its aims are. A uh, little bit about the people participating in the conversation tonight. Holly by No is a visual artist, curator, co-founder, and editor-in-chief of Art Magazine, a nonprofit visual arts and culture publication focused on contemporary art created in the Caribbean and across its diasporas. She is a graduate of Bard, where she earned her MFA in Advanced Photogra Photographic Studies. She's the curator for the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival's new media programming and the International Biennale of Contemporary Art, Martinique. Annalie Davis is a visual artist and the founder of Fresh Milk Art Platform, an artist-led initiative for exchanges among contemporary creatives supporting interactions across disciplines. She's a part-time tutor in the BFA, pro BFA program at the Barbados Community College. And Sofia Maldonado is a Cuban Puerto Rican artist whose practice centers around issues of her identity and the energy of youth culture. She's inspired by abstraction. She deconstructs post-colonial urban landscapes and intertwines them with nature. She completed her postgraduate studies at Pratt Institute in New York. Atelier 89, we'll be having Elvis Lopez from Atelier 89, which, is, which offers, is an organization that offers Arubans and others from the Caribbean an orientation in contemporary applied art and design. They offer workshops across disciplines such as painting, installation, video art, photography, drawing, fashion, theatrical design, ceramics, animation, graphic design, and the history of art. Every workshop culminates in an exhibition which is open to the public, and Atelier 89 works in close cooperation with a number of art academies in the Netherlands, allowing young talents who have started off in the workshops of Atelier 89 the mobility to move through Dutch academies. Welcome, Annalie, Holly, Elvis, and Sophia. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Deborah. Elvis, I'm going to direct the first question to you. What exactly is Caribbean Linked? Caribbean Linked is a platform to connect all the islands again together and to profile the islands for an international, a larger and international platform. So it basically is to link the islands yes, on, on the new media and to be connected to all the other institutions that um, have platforms like us. So, and to promote also the, the young talent to, to get to know each other mm -hmm. in the Caribbean as we are very very close to each other and so far away. So the, the basic thing about that is to connect the people again to each other. The curators as the artists and the public. Great. What exactly, what, can you tell us a little bit about the organization as well? About your organization? My organization is ba based um, as a two-site organization. We have an organization here and that's uh, our foundation here in Aruba. And we work close with our uh, friend foundation in Holland, who most of the time is uh, organizing to get the funding for our projects here. 
So most of our projects are, are, are uh, donations of the Dutch foundations to Arts Aruba and our projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, our foundation is basically... Yes, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, uh, our foundation here on, uh, on the island is basically to organize the workshops and uh, things like linked and uh, accidentally um, exhibitions and, uh, and uh, to help the local artists also to, to make exhibitions themselves and most are non-profit organizations and, uh, and uh, to help the artists most of the time to, to perform or to make a show or to do an exhibition. So it's not only to, to, to do the workshops, but also to, to help the local artists um, to, to, um, to profile themselves in, the, in, the, in the, the business of the arts. So it has many, many different sides. And this is the second year of the program? This is the second year of LINKED, yes. The first one was Aruba LINKED, mm -hmm. where we linked ourselves to the institutions in the Caribbean. And we are still are looking for more institutions to be linked with. And then this year um, we, we connected uh, as to, to link the, art, the young artists within themselves. So we invited all these islands to be participating so we can know them. And uh, they know each other a little bit more. Okay. How many and we link to each other. How many artists are participating? Ten. Ten. Okay. Ten, no. Can, um, Anneli, can you tell us, and, and Holly, can you chip in too, how, how you chose these artists, the 10 artists, and what the process was like in choosing? Um, well, Holly uh, you know, was in Barbados. We were working here at Fresh Milk uh, some months ago. Um, after we had been in, the, the first Caribbean link happened last October, where Holly and myself, along with John Cox, Rocio Aranda from El Museo del Barrio and Paco Barragan, an independent curator from Madrid, were there. And so this is kind of a follow-on from that program. So we were having a conversation after Elvis had invited us to partner with him to organize a residency. And we sat down and we just started talking about some of the artists, the younger artists in the region, who didn't know each other and that we thought would be it would be good to put them into the same space for them to begin to develop relationships. So we just started sharing our, you know, our, our knowledge of the space and discussing who we thought would work together, trying to be diverse in terms of the French, the Dutch, the Spanish, the English, male, female, a variety of, of uh, media that people are working in. Um, Holly, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, I think um, I have a lot of former experience with most of the artists who we've chosen to work with this year. And um, I, I feel as though it was important for us to have a broad spectrum of emerging artists who are still trying to find their footing, yet in a local space they have sort of outgrown the potential that they have or the networks that they are in. So to engage with them in a productive way, we decided to, to see who was doing a wide range of work because we wanted to have it be this expanded study as to what emerging artists in the Caribbean are now doing. And I think for us it was a very sort of intimate process because um, I've brought my experience to the conversation. Annalie obviously had her, her experience working with some of them as well. And I think, you know, we started with a long list of maybe 18 people. Then we started to configure um, a group and I feel so we targeted, or we chose 10 people who best reflected, um, you know, potential growth, people who can engage, people who wouldn't be afraid to interact and collaborate. And being in a new space for two weeks, which isn't a tremendous amount of time to make work, but certainly enough to expose their consciousness, their practice, and, you know, people who would be also willing to try something new. So yeah. I think, you know, it's a combination of these things for us. Yeah, so I, I notice here that... The artists are from, um, you have artists representing a wide range of nationalities, right? You have from Curacao, the Bahamas, Barbados, yeah. Martinique, Puerto Rico, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, and Aruba. How, yeah. how I mean, what was, you say it was an intimate process. Um, how did you develop working relationships with artists from such a wide, um, you know, 
a wide range of nationalities. I know that I, I, because as Elvis says, even though we're in such close proximity in the Caribbean, we're still so far apart in so many ways. So how, how did you facilitate that kind of connection? Well, well, I feel as though um, it's the type of work that we do on a regular day at ARC, right? Mm -hmm. We have to look at the white span of who's creating, who's being engaged, um, who is being supported by institutions, um, people who are emerging out of new programs, people who are going into other residency programs. So we have a great idea of, you know, young professionals in this field. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, we don't have a, a ton to choose from. We don't have a ton of artists to choose from. So I feel as though our, our options were limited, but because of the type of work that we do, releasing um, you know, different news on upcoming exhibitions or doing interviews on a, on, a, on a monthly and a weekly basis with various artists that we come to understand who is being proactive, who is being you know, conscious of their space, who is willing to do that interrogation. So I think at the end of the day, it was a sort of easy choice because they're there, you know, it's the people who are doing the work that we, ch we chose because it's such a short period of time. We wanted to ensure that the, p the, the artists would come here and work and produce. Mm -hmm. I think also, if I could add to that, it's also having a sense that we're looking at people who are working in a contemporary way, who are pushing the boundaries in terms of their ideas or the technology that they're working with and feeling very much that these are people that need to be supported. And, and feeling that we need to try and create opportunities where these people can be, can be supported and that, that creating the opportunity is, is forcing them to come together in spaces, getting them to know each other so that they're not feeling that they're working in silos around the region. But now out of this, I'm very curious to see what are the relationships that are going to develop between these 10 people on the ground and what does that develop into thereafter. Um, mm. So it's really wanting to create opportunities for people who need those opportunities and, and hoping that people are not always going to try and migrate somewhere else to get them, but that we can actually create these really dynamic kinds of spaces in, in the Caribbean for people that need to be provoked and challenged and, and brought together and supported. Great. I just want to break a moment to tell everyone that's tuned in right now that they can send questions in to, you can tweet questions to us at NLS Kingston, so NLS, that stands for New Local Space, Kingston. And you can also send us an email at nlskingston at gmail.com. You can also send us a private message on Facebook, NLS Kingston. So um, please send those questions in. We'll be checking in periodically, and we'll ask your questions at the end of the, towards the end of the program in about 20 minutes. Um, Maybe all of you can weigh in on this one because I'm sure you each have your unique responses to this. What is the social relevance of the Caribbean Linked program and how are you connecting with the general public and the program is in process right now. How is it being received? That's a lot, but you can talk about it. Um, well, maybe I'll just address one part of that. Um, mm -hmm. we're, we're um, we're connecting with the general public. We're beginning to get in information from all of the participating artists, which we're going to start to share uh, in the next day, which will um, put information out there. Everybody's going to be submitting on a daily basis their experience in text and images. So we're going to start to be sharing that through all of our networks, through ARC uh, and through the Atelier 89 and through Fresh Milk and each of the artists' own networks. So that that is going to be start to shape an understanding of the people that are participating in this residency and the kind of work they're doing and the experiences that they're having. So that's one way that we're going to be connecting with the public using the online platforms to share this information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel as though because things are so um, centralized and, and localized that we really wanted to give the broader Caribbean region and you know even in an international audience the, the, the ability to have an understanding of what we are doing here. So Annalie mentioned you know the, the blog post that the artists will be developing. Um, Nicole Smythe Johnson is also here um, and Chantrell Lewis and, and myself we are going to write about this experience. Um, I feel as though that Elvis has engaged with you know the local public and the events are open, the artists have had various talks about their works and um, the public has been invited. Um, he's engaged with 
you know, the government, the private sector. So I feel as though the program is very, very well, well supported on the ground. And um, we want to make it very clear that we have, we now have the capacity to make this very um, visible, very transparent, so people can have an understanding of how a residency, you know, functions. It wouldn't be something you know, intangible for them anymore. They see that 10 people get together and create this body of work, have these type of experiences, and um, have this sort of personal and, and artistic growth. growth. And it's, it's, it's really important for us to be able to document that and present that in a professional manner, not only to gain access to funding, but also to, to make the program a little bit wider and to engage with new artists who may be coming up and emerging mm. out of this space. Uh, also, at the end of the residency on the 5th of September, there is going to be an exhibition which will showcase um, either works that the artists have brought in with them to Aruba or works that they have produced at Caribbean Link 2. And so that event, which is going to be hosted by Atelier and Elvis, maybe Elvis wants to say something more about that, but that's going to be another way that people on the ground in Aruba will get to come out and, and see the work that's being produced there. I think that's a good thing for Sophia to answer. But, uh, she knows how the process is going and uh, how it has been the last week. So go on, Sophia. Um, well, the process has been uh, very or organic. Um, every um, artist has, um, you know, through a series of uh, walks and like drives around town, um, every artist has kind of like you know, inspire or like grab um, uh, uh, a thematic uh, of Aruba or a design um, or a repetition that they don't uh, that, that they find find like new in the in in their visual like language or like um, what's a visual vocabulary. So, and then through a series of like also like organic meetups like through the day. Um, we have like kind of like help each other and give feedback um, uh, of each each one's like work, and some of the artists have also engaged to like you know help um, installations or video performances or um, even a sculptural work to like nurture each other from um, the process. Like if there's somebody that doesn't quite know how to achieve a process, then you know a few of the artists, or even uh, Elvis, or the curators, will like help them to achieve that. So although it's been a uh, you know you could say two weeks is a uh, short time, but it's been uh, very dense in information, um, and it's actually not as short as you would think. You know, it's been a really interesting um, developing process and. Uh, as uh, Robin said, it's like a it's like a sketchbook, like a visual, like you know, like a lived, like lived sketchbook, you know. Um, so, yeah. how long how long is the exhibition? The exhibition will stand for approximately two months. Okay. Three. So the so the program itself is two weeks, and then the exhibition at the end will be for two months. Yes. Great. Um, there's a long list of artists, and um, the, uh, ten artists is substantial for for two weeks um, for a productive or, or a prolific output for over the two weeks. What was there a criteria? Was there some kind of criterion that the artists were going to execute works in progress, or did you select projects that were more performative? I mean, how how did you overcome the challenge of this very limited time period? Ten artists and and having a productive program. I think that a lot of people have come to Aruba, and they want to take this opportunity to make new work. If it's going to be completely solved at the end of um, at the end of their time here, I mean that's completely up to them. But we try to facilitate and to help them through the development of their ideas, and. Um, you know, we tend to think about two weeks as a, a short period, but as Sophia said, uh, it's just a seed for us. Um, we've sort of brought these people together, and now ideas can germinate and, and change and be malleable and you know morph into something else. And maybe they even leave the space and collaborate with each other on their on their different islands or spaces. And you know, I, I feel as though um, even though 
it may be a stressful situation and from an administrative perspective of course making something like this happen is um is, is very intense you know and ali elvis and i have been working to put this together for a month a month and a half more, more than a month and a half so almost two months so from an administerial perspective it takes a lot of um you know energy time we have to think about our capacity what we want to include what we what we what we can't fund um so i mean i think a lot of things are in play mm -hmm. um this question comes to you from verle pupe the executive director of the national gallery of jamaica there is now a proliferation of artist residences throughout the caribbean while such initiatives were previously quite rare what are your views on this development and its effects on art in the region? And I'd how do you see Caribbean linked in this context? I'd like to answer or submit one answer to that. Um, I think that, that these, uh, the, the proliferation of residencies throughout the region is intimately linked to the emergence of the informal networks that have been developing in the last 10 years. And I think that the informal networks, such just Anna and the, well, the atelier is, is older because it started in the late 80s. Um, but I think these initiatives are responding to a vacuum in the contemporary art space that the formal institutions have not been able to fill. And, and I think that the realization that we need to create opportunities for people to gather, giving people permission to think, to create, to have a conversation, to function you know, in the ways that they need, um, that this has come out of the informal networks and I think that the effect on art in the region is also intimately linked to the use of the internet and its capacity to challenge the gatekeepers and break down the divisions and open up the space. So I mean I think that this, all those things are sort of have developed in tandem and it's made an enormous impact because now we can communicate as we are today, right now in this moment, in ways that we could not have done 15 years ago. Um, and, and Caribbean linked, the idea, as Alvis was saying before, is to really try and bring people together and to develop an awareness of who we are as Caribbean people so that we're not always um, forced to look to the north, but that we can also find interest and support within the region. Yeah, and I, and I also feel the way that Caribbean linked is structured, the way it's structured, it's a little bit different from other residency programs where you probably have one person coming in or two people coming in and spending you know two three months together this is an intense period where you have ten people who don't know each other coming in for two weeks so it's about you know getting them in a in an experimental space and like like Annalise said I think it's it's of prime importance that we begin to understand the value of these informal spaces that are, are now popping up and now proliferating our space. When we started the publication almost three years ago, you know, I could have counted on my hand how many residency programs were in the Caribbean and now we have, you know, NLS, Fresh Milk, Groundation, um, we have the Davidoff Art Initiative coming out of the DR and I'm sure there are others that I am unaware of. Oh, oh. Alice Yard in Trinidad pop up in, in the Bahamas. Yeah, yeah, and I and I feel as though all of these all of these institutions are somewhat linked or becoming connected, and I think that it would be, no, well, it is going to be tremendously beneficial for our space because it is giving shape to the visual arts industry. And I feel as though if we work on professionalizing the industry, then we can have access to things we previously we now have no access to. So it's giving us access to scholarship. Um, a lot of the artists can now can now you know put this on our, on their resumes and they become more competitive and it's mm. going to change the shape of how we look at the Caribbean in you know ten years time. Yeah, and to show their work, the most important thing is to share their the work online or to show their work live to each other. It's a completely different thing. Yes. When you were in the, in the telling us about your work, we were all astonished. And when you look on it online, it's a completely different thing. Right. You know, and, and, and you have a great experience with that, Sophia. Um, uh, well, t um, talking about like the, the artists, I feel like, um, although I'm not exactly, you know, I don't know exactly what was the whole like curatorial um, guidelines, but I feel like it's a great group, you know, even though everybody has like a sort of like a different um, uh, uh, body of work, right? Um, I feel there's uh, 
there's the instant connection in some way. Uh, uh, maybe there were the way um, we like I guess like um, kind of most of the same like generation, and um, I think uh, our ideology towards our countries are very like um, uh, you know like forward looking, um, and that kind of like um, shows in our work. And although we are like from different islands, and me being like. Uh, the Hispanic <laughs> in in the crew uh, has been very interesting because that uh, in Puerto Rico we're always looking towards the north, you know, and we never look like either to no, no to the right or left or not even south, you know, um, and uh, we kind of like ignore the Caribbean in a way. And um, although my work has really it has a great inspiration in the Caribbean culture, as for me it's been really important to meet all these other artists and like understand like their cultural, their backgrounds, their like, political point of view. So, um, and I feel like for them it's been like uh, the same, you know, kind of like it's been a really in, uh, important um, developing process for for most of us. And um, I think uh, maybe something that most of us have in common is that most of us have like leave our home country and some of us have returned uh, either to live and stay working in our home countries or maybe to just keep the connection from far away so there's also like that um, that that knowledge of like you know uh, leaving the Caribbean going to a big city and then coming back and then how can you like um, you know keep a contemporary uh, line of thought and, and the production, um, but also like um, digging into your roots or identity uh, issues uh, in your country or in your own work and how that reflects, you know. Um, and then for those that are not from Aruba, I feel that we all have definitely learned a lot about the, the island and like uh, whatever we thought uh, that we were going to encounter has been like a really different experience in a in a positive way, you know. Um, I think we've seen uh, an Aruba that a uh, few people get to experience uh, and also the fact that we have had like locals, artists in the group has been very uh, important because then we get to see like their um, home country, you know, uh, and then like little like niches that we would have never been able to experience. Mm -hmm. Sophia, can you tell us a little bit about the project that you are, are doing right now? In well, um, for me, this residency came uh, in a gr great point of my career because um, I've been going through a change. I, I've been doing a lot of murals and um, I'm running away from the street artist um, kind of like, you know, seal. Uh, and then I've been uh, wanting to do a more um, uh, fine artwork and then kind of train myself to have a studio, a more solid studio um, uh, practice. Uh, and then uh, what I've been doing is a series of um, wash on paper uh, drawings uh, or, or you can call it paintings um, of uh, my experience uh, in Aruba and they're kind of like what I call my mental pictures which um, uh, it could be like throughout the day um, if I see uh, a space I get inspired or like I want to like have a memory of it could be like a you know an abandoned place or like a, a little detail maybe like a cactus growing out from like a like a roof or also our night hangouts you know um, uh, so for the thing for me my work have always uh, been inspired of like um, subculture, you know, mm -hmm. like different sub subculture. So I enjoy uh, also the, you know, going away from, you know, from the studio or, uh, space, you know. So for me, it's like exploration of the of the different subcultures, including um, what we do what will explore the city, you know? Um, so it's like a base of, it's almost like a like a narrative, like a visual narrative. Um, and then I'm going to uh, create an installation of, uh, of my studio, the studio I built up here with my schedule and all that. So it, I'm kind of going to leave like uh, my experience in, in a, 
a solid way. Um, mm -hmm. So, but it's like a pretty experimental because I'm not like the person that usually does like installations. So, um, so it's a mix of that. So for me, it's kind of like a, it's, it's going to be kind of like a work in progress, but it's like a finished finished piece. Okay, so, so I, you mentioned that you are you're basically going to make an installation of your studio. Is are all the artists going to have? Are do they all have studios? All ten artists are allocated ten uh, discrete studio spaces. This is for uh, this is for elevation. Yeah, we, we we all have studio spaces, but there's a gallery space. So what I'll do is I'll bring part of my studio into the gallery space. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, and I guess another question for you, Sophia. This is probably the last question I have for you. How do you see the public interfacing with the project that that you are working on right now? In the end, when it's being exhibited, the general public. How, how, how the how general public gonna react on it? Not react, but interfacing. Is it is your project interactive in any way? Um, is it is it does it does it expand? Um, well, I mean. I mean, I, I'm pretty much gonna leave like a like a desk and a like a open space. So if somebody feels like sitting there and doing a drawing, um, there's gonna definitely be that open. Uh, it's gonna be open for that. I'll probably leave some like uh, like paper and like a piece of you know like a brush. So you can definitely, if you want to sit down and do a drawing, you can definitely do that. I mean. There's gonna, there's not gonna be like a sign saying sit here, but you know, if you're open to to sit down and have the experience of what it is to be a studio painter, then you're gonna be able to experience it, you know. Mm -hmm. Great. And um, most of the drawings are definitely like uh, uh, makes reference to like the the uh, you know to the city, you know, like it's like different walks I've been I've been doing. So I mean, uh, a lot of people will be able to recognize like different sites. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, I guess this would be more towards the organizers. Um, Holly, you can take me or Elvis. Is what were some of the major overhead costs? In it seems ambitious. Uh, I think it is ambitious, and I think we need more ambitious programming in the Caribbean. But what were some of the major overhead costs that you had for the program, and where where did you source funds? Well, the the the, um, the, mo the the biggest part of it is funding by the Dutch, by the Mondrian Foundation, and they they take um, this kind of experiment very very um, seriously, and for them it's very very important that all the islands and the Caribbean are connected, the artists are connected, and the curators are connected somehow to each other. And that's the whole idea behind it. That that's why they support it actually. And it's a it's a huge amount of money, of course. But they don't care about that. They care is that it, the people are linked to each other, and that the island starts working together much more than they do now. And that for them is the most important thing as a mother colony that they see that. The islands are still too far from each other mm -hmm. because they know also what is happening in Trinidad and they know what's happening in Jamaica. These people, they're, 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 they oversee all the sites and they, they see everybody, what they're, they're doing, and they follow everybody. And then they want the people to be more connected because they see they are not. You see? You think, you think we are, we think we are, but then when they look at the sites and then they see, oh no, there's a glitch in there and we want to fill in that glitch. And then that's how they do it. They did it to me too. And that's why I started the, the Caribbean Link. Yes. And so, so where it's an ongoing program. You have plans to, to have this annually? We are trying to move it <laughs> to our next island last year already. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work out. So next year we definitely have to organize it on another island. And that's also very important for them because they want to see a reaction to their interaction. Mm -hmm. So it's not possible that we organize it again next year. 
It has to move now, yeah. somehow. Okay. I have a question that came in. Um, this question was from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. How can other persons throughout the, car throughout the region follow along with what is happening with these artists in Aruba from beginning to end? From the, through the residency program, in the residency program? Well, they can certainly follow through um, uh, the online presence that we're going to be sharing uh, from tomorrow. We'll be sharing more, more of the information about the actual practice and the works that are developing by sharing the blog posting that the, the 10 artists are going to be uh, writing and, and sharing visuals with. and. Um, you know, and I think then, if depending on whether there's interest in that, they can begin to follow all ten artists, or you know, whichever artist they're interested in following up on. Uh, but we're going to start certainly um, platforming their text and their images in the next 24 to 48 hours, mm -hmm. uh, and that will be available through Arc and through the Atelier and through Fresh Milk. Okay, so people can go to the Arc Magazine website mm -hmm. to access this information, and to yes. the Fresh and to the Fresh Milk. Platform website. Yes, yeah, so it's freshmiltbarbados.com, the art magazine, and the Atelier 89 faces. Yes. Okay. Oh, and I want to, I would like to include um, following up uh, with the links idea and uh, as a side project, uh, I decided to um, reach out to the Huffington Post uh, yesterday and um, I talked to the editor and I got uh, approved to do a uh, a piece of on all of us. So um, and along with uh, Mark, we'll be doing like a photo and um, a story in the Huffington Post. So that was also very important for me that you know being able to take all these artists also to like a like a more like international level as the Huffington Post. And then they also will have all the links and link, links also to all our sponsors being Atelier, ARC, and Milk. So we have a live audience. We do, uh, we do, we do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so there's another question that just came in. To add to the responses on the matter of social relevance of the Caribbean for the residency, one of the things I've found really interesting over the time I've been here has been the challenge that these artists, individually and as a group, present to normative conceptions of the Caribbean. Aruba as a space is a real interruption of the perception of Caribbean within and without the region. Additionally, the kinds of conversations and exchanges that are happening are expanding the boundaries of my narrative about the Caribbean space as well as a narrative of the artists and their work in concrete and observable ways. I think this is a very important and relevant renegotiation given how limited and limiting many of the existing paradigms of Caribbean nest can be and have been. In a way, it's opening up new possibilities for what being from the Caribbean can mean. I guess this is not a question, this is more of a contribution. <laughs> and this is, actually, this is from somebody who is very informed. This is from Nicole Smith-Johnson who is the former senior curator of the National Gallery of Jamaica and currently she's on the, on the advisory committee of New Local Space and is working with ARC magazine in a, as a contributor, a regular contributor and editor. Um, thanks Nicole for that contribution. Um, we, have, we have one more question and um, how do you see Caribbean linked in um, in the context of of what is happening across the Caribbean? Uh, can, can I across what? Across the Caribbean in general, in art, in the art world. Can I actually, um, Deborah? I just would like to just pick up on something that Nicole said, and I think that her comment around Aruba interrupting. Um, this kind of this normative image of the Caribbean. I think that all of the artists functioning in the Caribbean are interrupting the the perception, and that you know, and that's that's the value I think of what she's saying, and that's the value and the social relevance of these projects that are happening. So I, I mean, I support her comment entirely, and I think that that's why these things are important because 
that image that gets produced over and over again, the tired stereotypes are being interrupted by the fact that these artists are making particular kinds of work that force us to be surprised when we see what they're doing. And that surprise is just so wonderful. And that's part of, I think, how we've selected these artists is because we want to be surprised by what they're thinking about and what they're making. And, and I think that that's a very welcomed thing uh, to be happening in, in these residencies. Mm -hmm. I have one other question that seems to be a response. Maybe it's a response to what uh, Nicole contributed as well. Um, this person says, and this is from Jamaica, if art is defined by context and the internet, the educated, the elite are, are the major contexts that we're working with, is the new audience abroad, just like outsourcing skips its local context? Um, will Caribbean art be likely to not care about being local? I, I, think, that, I think that we have to, um, in many ways, stop using these boundaries of local, reach, and regional to define what we are because they, they continue to put the stereotype on us that we can only produce this type of work in this type of context. Um, I do feel that the internet is this new way to expand, um, expand your vocabulary, expand your discourse, and I feel as though these sort of um, types and the way you sort of brand Caribbean art is going to, it's already changing and it's going to continue to evolve in that in that capacity. And what I am interested in when I look at them. Um, the, the, ten, the ten artists work is that, number one, we're surprised, um, no, and number two, they're being generous with their decisions, and I feel as though, as somebody who is involved in um, scholarship, it can lead to, you know, an, an, a, a sort of new sense of being, a new sense of um, becoming, and that is going to, in effect, alter our narrative. So I feel as though, yes, we have to engage with the fact that we that we may feel uncomfortable with saying that we are local artists, but that, that, does that mean that we are not from the Caribbean? No, we, we, it's just another place, right? And, and also I think, I mean, there are two things. One is there's no, there's nothing, there's no offline anymore. So the fact that we're online all the time means that we're engaging with people everywhere. But engaging with the local spaces are really important. What's happening in Aruba on the ground is really important because with a lot of the larger Caribbean exhibitions that have happened in the last 10 to 15 years, that work has not been seen in our local spaces. And so there's this chasm that has developed, or a chasm, between contemporary works that are being produced and not being seen or understood within the region. So having these residencies within the region means that people are beginning to connect with the work that's being produced in the region. So we're trying to close that gap where everything is being produced and exported or shown or written about, whether it's at the Brooklyn Museum or in the Netherlands or, you know, at the, the recent Caribbean Crossroads exhibition. And none of that ever gets shown in the region. So there's this kind of gap between the contemporary work being shown externally. So I think we need to engage with the local and the international audience and that that's fluid and that's wonderful. That's fantastic. That's a great space to be in. That's a wonderful position for us to be in. Mm -hmm. um, but Annalie, do you sometimes think that that also limits the way we speak about ourselves and the way people interpret who we are if we keep it only local? Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. I'm not saying that we should have it just functioning in the local arena. I, but I do think engaging with the local arena is, is important so that we can build critical mass mm -hmm. and that we can have these conversations in the space that the flexibility of functioning wherever we choose to function mm -hmm. and however these opportunities develop, you know, because of, of being able to connect in this kind of forum is, is really dynamic. And, and of course it's like if we are connected that sometimes museums, they don't see you, or, or a biennial don't see you, or a fair don't see you, but when you're connected, you're, 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 you're the one to speak. Mm -hmm. So you are the one who, who are promoting, actually. And if we are all connected, then all these things that happened in the past and we're not okay because of this or because of that, that won't exist anymore at a at certain moment if you, are, if you are all connected and we know what's happening locally and we can promote that what's happening locally. It's not only because it's happening locally, it's 
how to promote it to, to let other people see it internationally and not through the museum or to the established institutions only where where they choose what they want to choose and and leave a lot a lot on the side yeah, I do feel there's like a, a shift in ownership happening and I'm very excited about it. Um, no longer are we waiting for people, other people to define us or outside people to define us. Exactly. We are doing that ourselves. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Um, well, it's been wonderful having you all here and um, I'm, looking out for, uh, I'm looking out for more questions. I don't see any more right now. Uh, we do have quite a few people. Uh, tuned in right now. Uh, so if we have anything in the last minute, you know, I'll, I'll bounce it off of you. But for now, I just want to tell you, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining NLS for this. I mean, we're really curious, and we think that conversations like this are important because, um, as, again, as Elvis says, we don't really know as much about what is going on, um, you know, in the region and between between nations. And I feel like as artists, it's our responsibility to to keep abreast with what's going on, you know, across other nations. Not just not just looking towards you know what are considered to be major art hubs, but also you know there are a lot of there are a lot of currents that are happening right now across the region. And even just on a on a level of opportunities, artists here seem and artists in the region seem to concentrate on finding opportunities where they are and if they're not where they are then we look towards major um, art hubs and it's really great to share what's happening locally and regionally so that we can um, have more opportunities for collaboration. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, so thank you Anna Lee for joining us. Thank you Holly. Thank you Elvis. Thank you Sophia and the live audience that you have there. <laughs> Thanks, Thank bro. you. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for initiating this, Deborah. Appreciate the opportunity to share with uh, with your audience. Yeah, it was Thank my you, pleasure. Deborah. Thank you. Thank it was you. my pleasure. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>